Welcome back to A Chef at Large. Today we're going to talk about cooking pasta. Additional method, cooking pasta in a big pot. A liter of water to every 100 grams of pasta, or five liters of water to a bag, is standard and it's more throughout kitchens everywhere, professional home kitchens. You need a lot of boiling water, you throw the pasta in the boiling water, you stir like crazy, and that's how you make pasta. Uh, I recently became aware of a chow video with uh, Harold McGee, the curious cook, where he shows how to cook pasta, perfectly al dente, delicious pasta, in a skillet. I want to explain why. So we don't want to waste as much water as we do if we don't need it. The other thing is energy is of course on everybody's mind. The use of energy, uh, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to bring this pot of water to a boil before I can cook it. It will take much less time as we'll see to bring the pasta to fully done in the skillet. However, if you're cooking fresh pasta, you still need the pot of boiling water because fresh pasta, as you can see, is very tacky and it's gonna have some problem starting out from a cold state. The other reason you might want a big pot of boiling water is volume. Now, as you can see, this skillet is only gonna hold a bag of pasta. If I take a nice deep dish skillet, like we use in a restaurant, I maybe get two bags, but there's a problem. The top bag of pasta is gonna be pushing down on the bottom bag, and this center area in here is gonna to stick together and clump. We don't want that. That's not good pasta. Very simple, we put our pasta, we put our cold water on top. I've salted this water a little bit. You can use unsalted water. And you want enough water to just cover the pasta. So we'll turn on the heat, you can use your gas cooker or your electric cooker at home. The pasta doesn't care. People have been talking about, oh, you can't make al dente pasta this way. Uh, that's absolutely not true. Pasta becomes al dente at a certain time and temperature of cooking. It's time and temperature, it's a doneness, just like a, a medium steak is a medium steak, no matter how you cook it. Uh, so we'll get to and through if we're not careful, al dente. So you have to be careful, you have to pay attention to it. Uh, you have to test it as you go. Water is this wonderful thing. One of the wonderful things is it has a, has a fixed, very durable, boiling point of 100 degrees centigrade. So water, once it reaches 100 degrees centigrade, its phase changes into steam. It's no longer boiling water. So as long as you've got water in the pan, the maximum temperature can be 100, or again, the salted water may be 102. Uh, and that's a wonderful property. It allows us to, to do all sorts of things with water without overcooking. So it's a really good uh, medium. It's also very highly uh, conductive of heat, and so it moves heat very quickly, actually much faster than air. There's a couple things I've done to show you a finished pot, pasta recipe. This is just a simple olive oil uh, sauteed, gently sauteed garlic with some hot peppers in it, which will do. And then I have some classic butter and parmesan, which will do. You can do anything you want. If you want to cook these with a bolognese, I would suggest you take them out extra al dente and saute them in the sauce for a minute to let it absorb some of that sauce. Uh, traditional tomato sauce, marinara, same thing. Just cook it a little bit in the sauce to let it absorb some of that sauce. Finish it in that sauce. Now, you can see, I haven't stirred this yet, but I can go all the way down and every noodle is separate. Here's why. When we put the pasta into the cold water, the pasta's dry and it's hard. It's got a hard outside finish. And so the cold water, water finds its way, finds its way in between each strand of pasta. So before the water gets hot, there's a nice barrier of water around the pasta. And so it doesn't have a chance to clump together. Whereas if I put that whole mess into the boiling water and don't stir it, because the water is boiling, the outside of the pasta immediately gels. And as it gels, it expands and it bumps into the next piece of pasta and meshes together. If you do this at home, if you've got some clumped together noodles at home, you pull them apart, you'll notice the 
part where they were in contact is actually still dry and hard. That's because it hasn't been cooked. This has come up to heat in just a few minutes um, because there's a very shallow amount of water. Now, as you can see, no clumping together. It's all cooking evenly. You can just give it a little stir around. A large portion of what we're doing when we cook pasta is we're rehydrating the dried pasta. We're adding water back in that was dried out of it, but was air dried out of it. So there's a this pasta has been permeated with water, that's why it swells up, it's full of water. And when we talk about rehydrating pasta, you can actually soak pasta for, depends, a sheet of lasagna, maybe 45 minutes. It's similar to soaking beans. As they soak in the cold water, they will draw in water. They'll become thicker, bigger, and more pliant. A large portion of what we're doing in the cooking time, as we're cooking the pasta, as the heat's moving inwards, the water is also moving inwards. So we're using the heat energy to cook as well as hydrate at the same time. Once we start to get to this stage, the pasta is, you know, surpassing the water a little bit. So you do have to stir at this point a little bit. It's still not done, but it's getting close. I would say... Ninety percent. This is cooking all the way up here because this steam, steam actually delivers much more energy than boiling does. Um, it doesn't do it as efficiently because it's going through air, which is a different issue. But the energy of the steam, when it hits something that's not at the steam point, that's cooler than it, it converts back into water. And all that energy that caused the phase change, all that energy above 100 degrees Celsius, all those BTUs get dumped into the thing it touches as it condenses. So. This area above is not sitting out in cold air, it's actually very hot, steaming hot. You'll burn your fingers just above this where the pasta is sitting, and it's steaming. Uh, and it's steaming hot, it's actually as hot or hotter than the boiling pasta underneath. And that heat uh, is continuing to cook those pasta on the top. So you don't have to stir it vigorously like a risotto or something like that. I'm going to show you how to cook a couple of sauces today too. So I'm going to put this in with my olive oil and that'll still keep cooking while it's in the water just as it would with your pasta water. So I'm going to take some of this out. This is just a chili garlic olive oil. Olio. I love it. It's absolutely wonderful. So we're just going to bring that up to warm. And then I'm going to take some of this pasta out, and it's okay to get some of this starch water. This stuff is lovely. Uh, get some of that in there. Like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to put a little bit of my chopped herbs on there. A little bit of cracked pepper. And we'll shave in a little bit of Parmesan steak. Give me some cooking. For this one, I'm going to do a nice little classic butter and parmesan sauce that's just wonderful. You know, this is the sort of uh, luncheon noodle of Italy. Uh, so perfect. I love that. When I watch cooking shows, I love that. I love to do that. I love seeing the chefs do that. How do you know if it's perfect? You can't taste it. <laughs> trust me. You don't trust me? Make it yourself. Again, a little Parmesan with the butter. Delicious. Herbs in there. Or, if you don't like herbs, don't do it. This is for me. There you go. Two simple dishes and a bag of pasta in just a few minutes. Don't forget the pepper. Al dente, delicious, simple, saving the planet, saving your pocketbook, the seasoning. There you go. Try it yourself. Let me know what you think. You can give comments on the blog or on the YouTube channel. And until next time, I am your chef at large.